Okay, in this video, we're going to have a look at this little device here. Now, this is an accelerometer. It's a three-axis, plus or minus 3G accelerometer. And it's available on this breakout board, which you can get online. It's pretty inexpensive. An accelerometer is made by Analog Devices. It's an ADXL335B. Now, with this accelerometer, you could do some tilt sensing, motion detection, shock, vibration, impact detection. It runs on 3.3 volts, but there's a regulator on board right here, so you can run on 5 volts. And hookup is pretty simple. There's only 5 pins. You look on the back. See the top pin is your VCC. That's your plus 5 volts input. And your bottom pin is your ground. Then you have the three outputs, the three axes outputs. So your X, Y, and Z. So if you look at the front, so your X axis would be in this direction. Your Y axis is in this direction. And your Z axis is actually right through the board. Now I've made a few videos on accelerometers and I've interfaced them to uh, the Arduino Nano but in this video we're going to interface it to a, a non-microcontroller circuit so we don't need to do any coding so if you're a beginner and you're not into coding yet on Arduino platform or Raspberry Pi we're actually going to hook this up to a, a non-microcontroller interface and it will let you experiment with an accelerometer. Okay here's the data sheet for the ADXL335 accelerometer. So it's a low power, three axis, plus or minus 3G analog output accelerometer. If you look at the very left, the supply voltage to the chip is 1.8 volts to 3.6 volts. And the power consumption is very low, 350 microamps, so it would be good for battery powered applications. Now the user can select the output bandwidth of this accelerometer by adding three capacitors to the outputs of the three uh, axes, X, Y, and Z. And on the breakout board, there's actually 0.1 microfarad capacitors from each output to ground, so that will give us a bandwidth of 50 hertz. But we could actually add more capacitance to the three outputs uh, for, for a custom bandwidth. Now if we go down to the block diagram, you can see our three-axis sensor. And you can see the three output amps that are driving the three axes, the X, Y, and Z. And in series, there's a 32 kilo ohm resistor on each output. And we could add our capacitance on the output, there's external capacitors for our bandwidth. So there's our three outputs, our three voltage outputs for X, Y, and Z. Now if we go down into the specs, we could see that when there's no G-forces applied to the X and Y axis, the output voltage will be 1.5 volts. So we'll idle at 1.5 volts, that's half VCC supply. Now as we add G-forces to the accelerometer, the output voltage will change 300 millivolts per G. So it'll actually uh, go either positive or negative, depending if it's a negative or positive G applied to the accelerometer. But that's our sensitivity, 300 millivolts per G. So that's all the data we need to, to know about to build a little interface circuit. So we'll build a little interface circuit without using a microcontroller, so you could experiment with this accelerometer. Okay, I have my accelerometer breakout board mounted on my breadboard, and I'm feeding it with 5 volts. And you can see my little interface circuitry, it's one IC, and two pots. And the IC is the LM339, it's a quad voltage comparator, so there's four voltage comparators inside that IC. So what I'm doing, I'm feeding the voltages from the X and Y axes into the voltage comparators, and I'm using the pots as my threshold uh, comparator voltages. So as I tilt on the Y axis, and I apply a plus G, a positive G, to the Y axis, the voltage on the X output will, will rise from 1.5 volts towards 3.3 volts, and it will it'll exceed the threshold of the comparator and it will turn on the LED. Now as I tilt it the other direction, a negative G on, on the y-axis, the other comparator will detect the voltage dropping and it will turn on the corresponding LED. And that works the same for the, there's your, there's your Y and then there's your X. So I got the four LEDs monitoring the X and Y axis so I get my, my proper output. So that's a way we could actually experiment with accelerometers without using a microcontroller just by using voltage comparators and comparing the output voltages to our threshold voltages on our pots. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my accelerometer interface using an LM339 quad voltage comparator and you can see the four comparators there and each one is driving an LED. And if you look at the left you can see the two pots, the two threshold pots and you can see the output X and Y outputs from the accelerometer are applied uh, here, so this is where your X and Y will be applied from your accelerometer, and also down here, your X and Y output will be connected to the bottom. Now, the top two comparators are comparing positive G forces on the X and Y axis, 
So this threshold pot is, is set to detect a voltage rise from, from 1.5 volts towards 3.3 volts. Now this pot is set off to detect the voltage drop, so it will be a negative g-force on the x or y axis. So you set the threshold to detect a voltage drop, which would, which would output the two comparators. So you set up the two thresholds, and you set them up to your desired uh, tilt angle on your uh, accelerometer, and it will activate the corresponding LEDs. So that's your interface there, it's very simple, so you don't need a microcontroller to experiment with, a, with the accelerometer. Okay, now you know how the simple accelerometer interface works. Now instead of feeding the output of the comparators into four LEDs, you could actually feed that into some kind of logic circuitry like flip-flops or any kind of logic circuitry if you're building a project. Now the output of the of the comparators are open collector, so you have to have a pull-up resistor uh, before you feed it into any logic circuitry. Now to adjust the sensitivity of the, of the accelerometer, you just tilt to the desired angle and then you just adjust your pot until your LED comes on and that will be your right there so that will be your trigger point so you can do that for both the X and Y axis so it's pretty simple to set up so I hope this video gave you some ideas how you can experiment with accelerometers without using a microcontroller